Good morning, Bear Nation. It's me. It is I, the Oso Independiente Bear of Bear Nation. BearIndependent.com. Why the gray hairs, Bear? Because I have pretty daughters and a robust compost pile. And I've been there and done it, man. What are we going to talk about this morning? I think there's an upside to this virus. I think there's an upside to this virus. Now, I will admit the response to this virus seems way out of proportion to the actuality. I mean, we had, what, 15,000 people in America, in America, died of swine flu not that long ago. 15,000 people died of swine flu. And our international economies were fully integrated at that time as well. We were still traveling about the face of the earth at that time as well. So something's up here. And I do believe to a greater or lesser extent, whether it's make it happen or let it happen, ooh, dog whistles, um, that the virus is being used to help, uh, to help crash land the world's failing economies, to institute a reset economically because the markets should have corrected anyway because our currencies need correction anyway because we've somehow remained propped up since 2008 anyway and so we needed to kind of glide in and come to a little bit of a crash landing and this virus creates a it creates the plausible deniability to do that whether, I don't know, and I don't know which one came first and it doesn't matter, but I see that happening. If you look behind the scenes at the actions that are taking place, I see that happening. What are the potential upsides of this? Well, for me, if I had to stay home for a while, it's spring on the homestead. I mean, look, the sun's just coming up through my pine trees over here. Awesome. It's spring on the homestead. Oh no, stay home and GSD, get stuff done. Okay, please not that. I mean, I'm in, right? But that's an upside for me. What's an upside for all of us? Um, I think a lot of people right now are beginning to shift their mindset. First of all, people that were not awake at all are becoming so. Um, it's a great opportunity to evangelize with people who have been on the fence about preparedness or who are just waking up to the idea of preparedness right now. Um, hey, this is why we do this. And this is the type of thing where you don't have to whip out your tinfoil hat to have this conversation with somebody. You just go, look, this is what's going on in the world. The CDC is saying you may have to stay home for a couple of weeks. And hell, it might be three months. But... You don't want to scare the noobs with three months, right? So you got to stay home for a couple weeks. Maybe let's double that to a month. Do you have a month's worth of food? Well, I don't have the money. Well, I can help you with that. I can show you how to do this without spending a ton of money, right? And so it's a great time to evangelize. And I know a lot of y'all are having a lot of success with that. So kudos. That's awesome, right? And then those of us that say already have our food storage in place have been continuing to up our food storage game. But I see a lot of people who have been preppers in the sense that we as a community tend to try and buy our way out of problems. A lot of people are shifting mindset from consumerism to production. So rather than buying all the things, realizing that eventually there may not be any more things to buy. So we have to be able to produce as well. Which is why because of intentionality, I find myself on this piece of land right now intentionality and unequivocally the hand of the most high yet here I am okay and so the concept that there might not be something to buy whether because the system has shut down there's nothing on the shelves or I simply can't afford it or it makes more sense uh, for me to produce my own I need to get out of consumerism and move towards production I see a lot of that happening right now as well which is great because, you know, like, I got 50 meat birds that we're going to slaughter here in the relatively near future. And um, they will be 
antibiotic-free, free-range, cruelty-free, uh, cage-free, organic, pick all the buzzwords. They're that way without trying. That's just how it is, right? That's just how it is. It's lambing season right now in the homestead, which is great because lambs are cute and then they turn into meat when they get older and that meat is delicious. So <laughs> the production mindset, I see a lot of people uh, doing that, planting gardens right now. We are actively planting gardens right now and I've been following a lot of y'all on Instagram as well are actively uh, planting gardens. That's awesome. Get your seeds from the Burning Hearth Homestead, by the way. Yes, get them. Um, so, evangelizing and moving from consumerism to production. Uh, I think more people are starting to understand the value of community. That And community, however you choose to define that dreaded C word. Not necessarily that we all have to sit around and strum our acoustic guitars with nylon strings and sing kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. Oh, lord, kumbaya. Right? We don't have to do that. Hey, if y'all want to, go for it. I'm not wearing tie-dye. I don't get down with the wacky tobacco. I'm the worst high person you've ever seen. The worst the worst. I'm like, that's it. The reptilian overlords are going to come right up out of the ground right now and they're going to eat our kidneys because they got to have them for the adrenochrome because like, I'm the worst high person you've ever seen. So we are not going to do that. However, however you choose to employ community, go for it. Whether this is your neighborhood, your community watch, your suburban cul-de-sac, your rural group of people within a few square miles, your church, your whatever, right? The idea that we're stronger together than we are as individuals. And um, that's a really buzzwordy phrase. But a tribe, a strong tribe, can only exist with strong individuals. And strong individuals find their sense of purpose and fulfillment in a strong tribe, in a community, right? And so I see a lot of that in the last month since this virus thing has, has become, has gotten on our radar. I see people getting it. It's clicking on a little bit. And so I think that's a plus. Um, I think, I think that more people as we move forward with this because of this rampant consumerism and funny money that we've been playing with for ever the idea that we got to stay home for a little while i think that's good for a lot of reasons but i think from a speed of life standpoint that's good I think it might do America well to take a deep breath for a couple of weeks. Just <sighs> There are bigger issues at hand than my Wi-Fi is a little slow today. Or that, that dumb B word made my latte wrong. There's more to life than that. I think staying home for a couple of weeks could be good for us as Americans to remember that. You know, I saw the president's uh, address to the nation last night talking about um, $50 billion. Where was he going to get that from? I don't remember. $50 billion to the CDC, $200 million in tax, or $200 billion in tax deferment payments. Freeing up the SBA, the Small Business Administration, I thought that was brilliant uh, to provide uh, zero interest. I think it was zero interest. It might have been low interest. I think it was zero interest interim loans to businesses affected by the virus. And then payroll tax. Amen. Hey, can I get an amen? Yes. Be healed. Get rid of that thing. That's definitely a plus. And so if you, not only is that a plus for the nation, right? Never let a good crisis go to waste. I'm in, but if, hey, if it's for conservative values, look, a giant puppy dog. Do not lick my face. I know what you've been eating. Go kill things. Go kill things. 
go kill things. So, down. You wanna say hi? Ugh. What are you doing? All right, go, be healed up. 120 pounds of face-eating agility. So that's good for the nation, but it's also good for us as individuals and, and let the, never let a, a crisis go to waste, right? But especially for a conservative cause, I'm in. You have a tick on your head. Go see your mom. So that's good. But also if we have to stay home for a couple of weeks, there's money in the system. Not that I think that it's necessarily the government's uh, responsibility to pay people to stay home because of this virus. But I think the way, uh-uh, I think the way that the president is going about it is pretty smart. So that should be a comfort to people. And in the process of staying home, if we have to learn to just slow down a little bit, Hell, even if your version is slow down, it's curl up on the couch with your family under some blankets and watch Netflix for two weeks and learn to be a family again. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, my, my version of slow down is get out here with a chainsaw and an ax and make firewood for next year and finish planting my gardens and, you know, get the, replace the siding on my busted up POS house, right? Finish my deck. <sighs> Whatever. Take a deep breath from the rampant consumerism that has defined America for so long. I think that would be good. And I think lastly, a positive of this is a perspective shift. I think why this scares so many people is because there's not a damn thing really we can do about it. Now we can, we should wash our hands, cover our cough, uh, sanitize, social distancing, all of that. We should, absolutely should do that. But the, at the end of the day, the Father's will is going to be done. If he wants you to get it, you're going to get it. If he wants you to live through it, you will. And if it's part of his divine plan that you don't, you're not going to. And I think on some very deep level, millions, billions of people are being confronted with their mortality and they're being confronted with the fact that they might think that they're driving the bus but they're really just a passenger we're going wherever our divine creator wants us to go and that part perspective shift battle goat she's literally pawing my back well she didn't have a paw hoofing my back you've been fed already get out of here goat that perspective shift is, I think, very good for a lot of people. And to understand that it's not your way, it's Yahweh. It's his will be done, not your will be done. That there's a beautiful synthesis between praying as if your life depends on it because it does and busting your ass and somewhere in there, this wonderful thing happens between the sweat of your brow, the blood of your hand, the pain of your back, and the skin on your knees knocked off because you've been praying so hard. But when that comes together, really, really good things happen. And I see a lot of people come into that perspective shift as well. I've, I'm having those conversations with you all back channel, and it's great. And so... One of the many reasons that I encourage all of us, myself included, to not operate out of fear, but to operate from positions of strength is because when you're fearful, you miss the blessings that can come from this. Your mindset isn't in the right place. I'm not actively courting this virus. I don't want it. I don't want it in my house. I don't want it anywhere near me. I'm also not losing my ever love of mind over it, nor will I. If I get it, nor will I. It is what it is. And in that, in the taking it off of my shoulders and putting it on his, man, now I'm free to operate again 
Now I can move about the battle space. Now I can do what I need to do to make him smile so that I don't miss the blessings that can and are coming from this. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. Maybe I think in, in part what I do is help articulate some of the points that y'all are already feeling. And if I can help give you the phrases that you need to articulate these things to the people that you love and the people that you, you interact with, I win. I won. I won today. Awesome. And so I hope that this message is a blessing to you. I hope that this, this helps you in this <laughs> uncertain time. Uh, and I'll leave you with this. None of this. Not one millisecond of this worldwide pandemic economic crisis is a surprise to Father God. None of us have surprised him. He knows precisely what's going on. And the trick for us is to be precisely where he wants us in these uncertain times. But you're not surprising him. If you know that, if he, is in, if he is in you and you are in him, it don't matter. It just don't matter. Shalom, y'all.